Okay, so welcome to this last part of the lecture where we're gonna talk about mobile commerce specifically, and we're gonna take a closer look at how that has enabled new kinds of products and services. And in this example, we're gonna use a few, uh, in this part of the lecture, we're gonna use a few examples of uh, China, but you will probably recognize a lot of these developments in your surroundings because those developments are being rapidly uh, deployed in, in Europe and around the world because of the corona outbreak, because we're uh, at home. So let's say that before we had these consumer to consumer interactions, you could even say business to consumer interactions, where a consumer would offer a product or a service to another consumer and that consumer would pay for it. We already talked about this platform based economy in the previous lecture on competitive advantage, where a consumer would rather use a platform to offer their products and the services to another consumer and they would pay for it through the platform. So that is a uh, platform based business concept where the consumer would pay a fee to the platform, the consumer uh, using the products and services would pay a fee. So the platform itself doesn't really provide products and services. It enables people to connect with each other and supports that connection with quality checks or payment programs, and it would take a small fee from that. So that is actually a re-intermediation. So because we are reintroducing a platform to intermediate and mediate between two, two customers or between two, uh, business and, uh, two businesses or business to consumer. So the platform introduction is re-intermediation. And examples you probably know are Airbnb. You know, Airbnb does not or has very limited own locations, but rather connects people that do have this location with somebody who, who doesn't. Same for Uber, shared bikes, wireless, wireless payments, and so on. Now, we already talked about platform economy, but what is interesting is that these platforms also enable people that previously weren't online or not offering their products and services online to do that as well without making major investments. If you had a small cottage that you were renting out before, you may have to set up your own web, you know, you would ask friends and you would do mouth to mouth advertising it and people would know you, but your reach was limited or you would have to build a whole website to advertise it. And then, you know, invest in all these technologies to allow people to book online, charge their payments and so on. So these platforms enable people that previously were only services offered, offered offline to offer them online. So this is the transition from uh, offline to online, but vice versa, you can also go from online services to offline services. Essentially, I'm visiting a website to book a hotel room and the service that gets delivered to me is not a digital service, but a physical service, I could use that hotel room. So it blurs the lines between what is offline and online. Um, so these platforms, they bring people from that were previously disconnected, bring them together, re-intermediation. They also allow people to transition from offline to an online community and they offer people who were only online to obtain offline services, such as a physical bike or a car ride. So that model is driven by a lot of technologies and uh, driven mainly because people are seeking convenience. Uh, people who want to stay somewhere, they are looking for, uh, you know, they want to easily find a place that fits with their needs. So technologies enable that. Uh, and they build on the convenience that people are looking for. Secondly, as we said, with all the e-commerce, the customer base extends. More and more people can use these uh, technologies and they can, uh, it en enables these companies to offer their products and services to a wider range of customers. Um, another element you will often hear is sharing economy it means you have some resources you're going to share with other people. You have a car, you can start sharing it with other people using Uber pop and, and make a profit. And uh, so there's a lot of companies that offer them. We already mentioned Air Uber and Airbnb, but Bolt.com and Amazon are similar. They don't offer products or to a limited extent themselves, but they enable other people to sell products and services through the platform and enable a larger customer base to be reached. 
nowadays what you will also see is that some of these technologies that are purely our information and technology are finding their way into the physical world we always talked about this transition from from companies that were offering their services in physical stores to the online community using these information technologies. But these information technologies have also enabled people to extend their services uh, and, uh, in the physical world. So here is an example of me in China, and this was in a food market in Xi'an and was uh, ironically named Eat Confused, which is very convenient for me because I don't speak any Chinese. Um, but the nice thing is that in China, you rarely have to speak Chinese. So this was me at a local uh, kiosk selling uh, street food. And the only thing I needed on my mobile phone was a QR code. I could just point to the dish I wanted. And uh, the lady had to only scan with her device my mobile phone and the transaction would happen. Uh, no needs of exchanges, uh, no words need to be exchanged. So that enables small businesses to also use these technologies and to connect to their customers, to conduct transactions. And um, especially in China, you will see that with a mobile phone, you can essentially pay everywhere and vice versa, that all the products and services, people will accept QR codes. It makes it, it's very easy for people who want to sell something to use a mobile phone or some other device uh, to charge each other. So it also enables consumer to consumer uh, transactions. Um, even other technologies that are happening is that within small restaurants, you can order online. Um, so throughout China, you, you, you know, this profusion of technology, is not just for big restaurants or organizations or platforms, it is actually uh, everywhere for all the consumers. So just paying with QR codes, just a mobile phone is enough in China with your credits uh, to go around to get food, get rides and so on. Um, there are, of course, also some risks when you talk about uh, e-commerce, um, you know, companies, uh, when we talked about securing information systems, but doing transactions online or transactions digitally also poses some risks. So here are some things that you should keep in mind. So make sure you know the business and trust them. If you're not sure, do background checking. Always keep a record so later you can prove that you have paid or that uh, amounts have been conducted or you need to give them to the police somehow. Always check your bank and credit card transactions, see if not money is being deducted. Make sure your browser is up to date, secured. The website is secured with a small lock in your browser, uh, secure Wi Fi and so on. All these things we talked about in, in chapter 10. Um, check what the company does with the data. You know, remember that the business model is not only selling you products and services, but throughout the lecture, I've shown you that e-commerce also enables companies to learn from you and of you using your data, because every time you order, they can see uh, how long you've been on the website, what you're interested in, what you're doubting about. So make sure you check the privacy policy to see what they do with your data and who has access to it. Make sure you understand what it means to refund and, sh and to ship especially if you order from further away or from other countries, um, make sure that you understand that shipping it back or you need to get a refund will be a lengthy process and probably will cost you money as well. And finally, in e-commerce in general, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So make sure that if you get see an offer online, you're thinking, wow, this is really cheap. Make sure you can identify why it is that cheap and you know is it because of the quality is it because it's a bulk offering or is it some uh, malicious intent that the website has so make sure if it sounds too good to be true be skeptical and make sure you check it